We're working on part 13 of problem 3 on the practice exam. Convert this recurrence into memoized pseudocode to solve the same problem. Assume that someone else has written the function f for you. Uh, now notice, by the way, all we're given is this recurrence right here. So we're going to have to, uh, I mean, what does it mean to, to solve the problem? Uh, who knows? It depends how the recurrence, what the recurrence is actually modeling. Uh, but we'll assume that all we want to do is compute the value of the recurrence for a given i and n, uh, because we can't do anything else. We don't know anything else about the domain of the problem. Um, so let's start by converting into naive pseudocode and then I'll convert into recursive pseudocode. So here's a naive version. We have this function d, it takes i and n. Um, what am I going to do next? Well, here's the conditions under which I'm in the base case. How do I know this isn't a recursive case? How do we know I know it's a base case? See any recursive calls? If not, it's a base case. And there are no recursive calls, so it's a base case. So if i is less than 1, or n is less than i, then I just want to return 0. Else. Uh, otherwise, I just want to return this quantity. Return d of i minus 1, n minus 1, times d of i minus 2, n minus i, plus f of i comma n. That's it. That's the naive version. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move this down below because I think I'm going to write my memoized version off to the right here. So i minus 2 n minus i plus f of i comma n. Good. All right. Now on the right, I'm going to write a memoized version. So I will still call my entry point d of i comma n, but I'm going to need a table. So uh, allocate a table. By the way, if you just make it a hash table, your life is so much easier. Uh, but I will go ahead and not make it a hash table. I'm just going to notice I, I am going to do i minus 1, n minus 1. So I'm always going to do the case where i is one smaller, n is one smaller. It's totally unclear to me that I'll use every entry of a table that is originally i by n. Um, but I'll go ahead and allocate such a table. Again, just use a hash table. And then which entries will you actually allocate in your hash table? You'll allocate the ones you need. If you know how hash tables work, that means you'll, you'll actually allocate maybe a factor of two more than that. But so what? You'll get really close to allocating just what you need. Uh, but I'll go ahead and allocate a table that is i by n. Uh, named... Um, solution. That seems like a perfectly reasonable name. What language lets you use a statement like alloc table i n named solution? Pseudocode. All right. Carrying on, then I'm going to have to actually call into a memoized version. So I'm going to call it dmem um, i comma n, and I'll pass in my solution array. So how does dmem work? Well, obviously dmem takes i n and a solution array. Now I'm a little concerned looking at this n minus i here uh, that I could end up going to very negative values um, and I only allocated this i by n table. Um, so I'm actually going to build my base cases into the memoized version without storing them in the table. It's usually not a problem to not store your base case in the table. You can just recompute it every time. Uh, I know this is going to be slightly different than exactly what I said to do uh, for building your table. Sorry, I just popped a little too far down here. I'm making myself more room. Um, you know, exactly what I said to do will, will probably work pretty well, but, um, but I, I'd rather set my base cases aside here. So I'm going to say if i is less than 1 or n is less than i. I'm not going to bother looking in the table. I'm just going to return 0 no matter what. Else, um, oh, I need to know whether the thing is already in the table. Uh, so I'm going to go back up here and say my table will be initialized to uh, null. Does the language allow null? I don't know. It's pseudocode. Sure, it allows null. Uh, else, if 
solution brackets um, i n is null then uh, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna say else do this the solutions bracket i n is null then we're going to compute the solution, right? So I'm going to set that aside. This is the point where we compute the solution and store in table. So compute uh, solution and store in the table. And when we're done, we will have the solution in the table. So we'll just return it. <clears throat> return solution brackets i. And how do I know the solution will be in there? Because I'm going to ensure that it is with this stuff right here. Okay, now how do I compute the solution? Uh, that's right up here. I'm going to take that and I'm just going to shove it in here. And instead of returning it, I'm going to store it in the table. So solution brackets i n is equal to, so I'm just going to move all that over, d i minus 1, n minus 1 times d i minus 2 n minus i plus f i n and that's it oh oops actually or that's not it is it uh, I just copied this stuff over here right so I just called into d over here but I don't want to call into d I want to call into d mem right and I do want to pass the table so let's go ahead and fix that um, those are all mechanical fixes, but they're critical fixes, or I'm not actually doing the memoized version. So I'm going to call dmem here, and I'm going to call dmem there, and I'm going to pass in solution here, and I'm going to pass in solution there. Okay, now this was times, and this was plus, and I should be done now.